morning, everybody. It's your favorite science teacher. Um, uh, what we're doing today is we're looking at the properties of water. Okay. And so that's what we're trying to do. I'm going to uh, teach you about, about properties of water. You should have already read the article or you're about to read the article on the properties of water. So without further ado, let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay. All right, we've talked about how water is a polar molecule here, right? Polar is short for polar covalent. Okay, so polar is short for polar covalent compound. Polar covalent compound. Co polar covalent compounds are atoms that share the valence electrons unequally. Okay, and again, this is going to be really important with our lab tomorrow too. So we're going to see this tomorrow with our lab. So again, making sure you understand why this is happening. So what we're going to see is we're going to understand a lot of this coming up. Therefore, the compound and molecule has charged ends. An example of a polar covalent compound is water, water, or H2O. Nonpolar covalent compounds. Uh, Nonpolar covalent compounds, again, we've covered this a teeny bit on the last set of notes here. Uh, they're atoms in, that share the valence electrons uh, equally. Therefore, the compound does not have charged ends. An example of this is oil. All right. Oil. Any type of oil is typically going to be like that. All right. Um, now, come over here. When we're talking about water, when we're talking about water, this, um, well, if I have 18 grams of water, let me pause for a second so I can show you what I mean by that. All right. All right. And so what I have right here is 18 milliliters of water right here. This is 18 milliliters. All right. And so it's not that much. But the amount of water molecules in this right here is huge. It's, 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 if you count and started counting the water molecules here, you would never be able to count until the rest of your life. If you count from now to the day you die, you wouldn't be able to count them all. There are, it's been calculated that there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules. And so when we're talking about, um, that could be 6022 with 20 more zeros behind it. So that's a lot of water molecules. So when we're talking about water, it's usually not a water molecule by itself. Okay. So we're talking about huge amounts of water. This has got huge amounts of water molecules. All right. And when we talk about these water molecules, they are not sharing these electrons equally. Okay. So I'm going to draw several water molecules. One side's gonna be negative and the other side's going to be positive. Here's another water molecule. One side's negative and the other side is positive. And remember that the dashes represent what type of bond? A covalent bond, all right? And they're sharing those electrons. But remember, we were just talking about polar covalent. They don't, they share the valence electrons unequally. Therefore, it has charge ends. Oxygen gets the electrons more often. Hydrogen gets them less often. All right. And so, all right. And so, these water molecules, if I have, I'm going to keep drawing a couple more here. All right, and all right, so I drew five water molecules. If you remember when we did the little thing with uh, our um, with our balloon, what do opposite charges do to each other? Yeah, they attract. All right, and so the for there's a weak force between the positive side of this water molecule and the negative side of the molecule, this molecule. So they pull together, all right? These two will pull together. 
These will repel, but these two right here will pull to together. And that causes water molecules to pull together. This has this is what we mean by when we say water is polar. Polar means it has it doesn't share the electrons equally, and therefore one side is negative and the other side is positive. And so that allows, since water's not by itself, this is huge amounts of water molecules, the water molecules pull to Together and they stick together. All right. All right. And this has a lot. This is extremely important. This is what our whole lab is going to be about tomorrow. Water being polar. And since it's polar, it has a lot of specific properties. So water molecules pull together. This weak force is called hydrogen bonding. This weak force that between the molecules is called hydrogen bonding. Okay. All right. So reason. So how does this affect water? Here are some of the ways that it affects water. Water has a high specific heat and a high heat of vaporization. Okay. It is an excellent solvent. It is adhesive and cohesive. We're going to go what each of these are. And it is a liquid at room temperature. All right, so starting off right here, uh, water, the first of these, has a high specific heat and a high heat of vaporization. Water has a high specific heat again. This means it takes water a lot a, or a, a high amount, a lot of a lot of amount or a high amount, excuse me, I should just write high, just trying to use the same word over and over, a high amount of energy to add, to increase uh, its temperature, all right? Um, so in order to make water go up in its temperature, it takes a high amount of energy, all right? Um, and so like for instance here, and so when water gets uh, over here, it's got these charges. And so if this water molecule starts to heat up and move fast, this other water molecule will slow it down because it's got that charged in and it pulls it back. So it's like these water molecules affect each other. It's because when particles start to get heated up, they start to move faster. But to prevent them from moving faster in water, they have these weak hydrogen bonds that slow each other down. And this makes water heat up slowly, all right? Um, it, um, water heats up slowly and it cools down. It means, uh, it means it takes a lot, a high amount of heat energy to be removed to lower its temperature. So it takes water a while to cool up, heat up and cool down. Right. Which heats up faster, sand or water? If you were at the beach, you're going to know that the want the sand heats up quickly oil also heats up very quickly okay and so those things heat up quickly and uh so that's they heat up quickly water heats up slowly because it's got this hydrogen bonding these attractive ends because water's polar oil is not going to be as polar here uh let's go move on here water also has a high heat of vaporization it means it takes a lot of energy to change water from a liquid to a gas at its boiling point, all right? Evaporation is the process where liquid water turns into gas at the surface only. Sweat is a process that removes heat from, from an organism by using evaporation. Water is heated by the body, then removed from the surface by evaporation. Through evaporation, the body is able to remove and maintain a steady body temperature. This is a process of, uh, what's that word that we said that where you can maintain a constant internal environment? It's called homeostasis. So water is able to, st helps organisms to stay at a constant temperature, okay? Next thing here, um, water is an excellent solvent. 
It is an excellent solvent. Okay. Uh, blank is the substance that does the dissolving. That's a solvent. Blank is the substance that's being dissolved. Solute. Water can dissolve solutes because uh, it can dissolve many solutes. I would say not. Uh, it can dissolve many solutes because it is polar. Water can dissolve polar compounds or ionic compounds and polar covalent compounds. Examples, water can dissolve salt and sugar. Water cannot dissolve compounds that are nonpolar. All right, nonpolar. Example of this is oil. All right, and so that's something that cannot dissolve well. So let's give a, a quick diagram on this, how this works. All right, so water, here's the structure of water. It's got a negative end, and it's also got a positive end. And here's another water. And I'll say it's got a negative end and a positive end. Probably should have done it over here so I have more room. All right. All right. Um, I might even redo it real quick. I have better room here, so excuse me. I'm sorry. I have to redo it here. All right. And so we have, and here is salt. I'm going to start over with this. NaCl. Na has got a positive charge. Cl's got a negative charge. This is a salt that's an ionic compound. Okay. So water comes up to it. The hydrogen ends are attracted to the negative end. And here's another one. All right. Um, I'll move that up so you can see a little bit better. The, the positive end is attracted to the negative end of another water molecule. Remember this, when we talk about this, there's so many water molecules, okay? All right. And what happens is that these water molecules pull this thing apart. All right. And so this is the kind of the before. And then this is the after. And this is what happens to salt. So Na is now pulled apart and it's surrounded by water molecules with the negative side uh, attached to it. All right, and here's the Cl. All right. I have the H and the H negative and the hydrogen and the hydrogen. All right, and so they separate these things. And this is why water dissolves salt. All right, this is why water dissolves salt. Water does a similar process with sugar too, okay? It does a similar process with sugar. All right. On the other hand, things like oil. Oil has a structure that looks like this. It's got a lot of carbon and it's got a lot of hydrogen. Oil's got a lot of carbon and hydrogen. All right. Oil, and I'm not, this is not the exact structure of oil. It's actually a little bit, a lot bigger molecule, but it does have a lot of carbon and hydrogen. All right. Oil. And this is not again oil. This is not, this is a smaller version of it. Um, oil has got a lot of hydrogen and carbon in it. So when water, it, and it shares these electrons equally. So when water comes up to it with its negative and positive end, it comes up to it and there's nothing to pull on it because it doesn't have charged ends. And so water, it comes up to it. Here's a water molecule. 
And so water can, it comes up to it and there's nothing to pull on it, but water is attracted to its self. So this is why water does not dissolve or oil does not dissolve in water. And so that's why we're seeing that right here. All right, I'm gonna pause for a second so you can see a, uh, uh, a picture of this. All right, so back over to what we're saying right here. Okay, and so what we have, this is oleic acid, which is part of olive oil. All right, if you look, there's a lot of carbon and hydrogen bonds and carbon and carbon bonds. All right, and so when water, when water comes up next to it, when water comes up next to it, these share the electrons equally, so they don't have charge in. So water is not going to be attracted to it. So like, just like we were showing right here, water is not going to be attracted to this. And so this is why oil does not dissolve in water because water is polar and oil is nonpolar. There's kind of a rule with this, all right? The rule is, uh, the rule is um, like dissolves like. So that means so there's a rule and I need you to write this rule too here. Rule is like dissolves like. Right, which means polar will dissolve, will dissolve polar, and nonpolar will dissolve nonpolar. Nonpolar will dissolve nonpolar. So this is why you can't when you get something like an oil on your shirt. Or if you get a Sharpie on you, and this is why water doesn't take it off because um, oil and Sharpie are nonpolar, okay? And so that's what we're trying to show with this here. All right, let me pause the video for a quick second. So, um, and again, so that's what we're seeing with that here. All right, so no, and now we're going to continue on to Roman numeral four, four here. It is water is both cohesive and adhesive. All right. All right. Adhesive means stick and co means together. So it sticks to together. All right. That's exactly right. Cohesive means the particles stick together. All right. And adhesive means the particles. Uh, add means two, so it sticks to something else. Sticks to something else. All right. This is why when we have water, water forms uh, rounded droplets. Because water molecules stick to together. Remember back over here how the water molecules pull together because they have a positive in and a negative in? They pull together, all right? And so, and this is because of its um, cohesive properties. This is why water pulls together. It sticks together. Um, water is adhesive. Um, um, is adhesive in a thin glass because of its adhesive properties or sticks to um, is higher. In fact, I'll actually change that to word higher in a thin glass because of its adhesive properties. And it's because the water has got that polar inside and it, it's attached to the, um, to the glass. I'm gonna pause for a quick second so you can see this. I'm gonna, all right, so what I mean by this picture right here is if you look in this picture, you can see how the water the, the water beads up and makes this a beautiful droplet because the water molecules are polar and they stick to together. And so that pulls them together and they make this beaded droplet. That's cohesion, all right? Adhesion, if you look at the adhesion and thin glass tubes, if you look, Here's the water level. When you put the glass tube inside the water, it's actually a little bit higher in the glass tube than in the rest of the water, all right? And the reason for that is the water sticking to the glass. It's more attracted to the glass than to itself. And this is because the glass has got that polar characteristic, all right? And so that's why it does that. 
And so this is called adhesion, all right? Now, these properties are very important for plants. This is how plants get water from the roots to the leaves, all right? The water molecules, like you'll see in this picture right here, they stick together, but they also stick together to the side walls of the plant stem. And that brings the waters up from the roots all the way to the leaves, all right? And so that's what we're trying to show. This is called capillary action and adhesion and cohesion play a huge role in that. All right, the properties are extremely significant for how plants get water from the roots to the leaves. This process is called capillary action. All right. Uh, some bugs can sit on water, even though the water is more dense, uh, even though they are more dense than water. This is because of water's cohesive properties. All right, and last little Roman numeral, water is a liquid at room temperature. This is because water molecules are attracted to each other. The weak bonding or attraction between water molecules is called hydrogen bonding. Would you shut the door over there, Jaden? Would you shut the door? All right. Hold on one second. I'm finishing here. All right. If enough energy is removed from water, the water molecules space out slightly because the hydrogen bonding turns it into a solid. Into a solid. And this solid is called ice. Ice is less dense. Um, ice is less dense than the liquid state. This is why ice floats. And this is why lakes freeze on top first, and then they go down. That allows the organisms underneath to continue to live. Freeze on top first. If enough energy is added to the liquid, water molecules space out because they have enough energy or kinetic energy to overcome the hydrogen bonds that hold it. Therefore, the, the liquid water will turn to a gas. All right, and we're going to see all these things in our, our lab tomorrow, okay? And so, but it's really important to understand that water is polar, and that means it doesn't share the electrons equally. Therefore, it's got those charged ends, all right? Whereas oil is nonpolar, it doesn't have the charged ends. That's what we were trying to show. And therefore, that's why water doesn't attract to oil. All right, and so with that said, we're done with our notes. I uh, hope that was good for you. I uh, will talk to you later. All right. Let me do this.